Okay, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think we will make uh, a start. A um, uh, very warm welcome um, to this session, this panel discussion uh, entitled Globalisation, uh, its impact on nurses and their nursing associations. Uh, my name is Harry Catton, I'm a new, newish member of staff at ICN responsible for uh, policy um, issues um, and it's very good to uh, some familiar faces and some new faces so hi to all of you. Um, I, uh, I just want to say up front that we are absolutely have deliberately put this topic uh, on the agenda. Uh, uh, for some it's a, it's a very controversial subject, uh, there are people who have quite extreme, may have extreme and very differing uh, views. Um, it, it's an issue which has become political over recent uh, months uh, as well, uh, but there's no doubt that it is impacting on nurses, nursing practice, and the work of our associations. Um, and that's why I'm particularly delighted to have uh, such a strong uh, panel of leaders uh, of associations uh, from, around, uh, from around the globe. Um, and to have five presidents uh, as well. I will be the president's man, uh, man this, after, the, the, this afternoon. I thank you all for your, for your time, um, not just in being here, but also the preparation that I know that you've given to, to this afternoon. Um, let me just introduce uh, the, the panel from your uh, right. Um, firstly, Grant Brooks, president from the New Zealand Nursing organisational organisation, um, followed by Dorothy Ngoma from uh, Malawi, the President of Malawi, and then uh, Eva Kilest from uh, Denmark, who's the President of the Copenhagen region uh, of the Danish, Associate, uh, Danish Association. Um, Barb Shellian, uh, President from the Canadian uh, Nursing uh, Association, and then Andy Gickenbarger uh, from uh, Rwanda, the president from uh, his association as, as well. Um, there is one panelist that is missing, and I just uh, wanted to share a little bit about um, the panelists who we'd, in, who we'd invited and until just a few days ago uh, was intended to be uh, here, here with us. Um, and Ibrahim comes from, the, from Bahrain and from the Bahrainian uh, Nursing Association. Um, and we have been working with the Bahrainian Nursing Association over the recent, uh, recent months. Uh, they've been in Geneva and we've had some, some, meet, some meetings. Uh, and I see and I had the pleasure of going to the International Labour Organisation uh, with Ibrahim as well. And the reason why um, he was keen, I was keen to have him on the panel, was to talk about human rights issues from uh, the perspective of, of the National Nursing Association. Some of you will be familiar uh, with uh, events that occurred and, and, and the situation in Bahrain and the situation that that put some of the, the nurses and leaders of that association in. Very, very briefly, um, if you recall some of the Arab Spring uprising back in 2011, there were some anti-government protests. Uh, and nurses and people from the Bahrainian Nursing uh, Association uh, offered care uh, to some of those protesters who were injured, um, who were participating um, in a peaceful, uh, a peaceful protest. Uh, as a consequence of, of, of offering uh, help and assistance, uh, a number of, not just nurses, but nurses and doctors and other healthcare professionals were arrested. Some went to jail for between five and 15, uh, 15 years. Uh, some, those longer sentences have been commuted and people have been have been released. The funding for the nursing association was, 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 was seized, which has made it very difficult for them to, they do continue to operate, but it's, it's, it's under some duress. Uh, there are difficulties with, with, with them traveling uh, as well. Um, and clearly there are very significant issues about um, deterring nurses from providing care to people um, because Political considerations at the time, but also that presents real, real challenges in terms of 
you know, all of us who work under a professional code of conduct and all the requirements and responsibilities that those are to deliver care to, 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 to people who need it in front of us, regardless of, 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 their, of their situation. Um, and a number of the nurses from Bahrain, uh, whilst they're out of jail, out of prison, uh, are still struggling to get work. And the meeting that uh, I attended with Ibrahim um, in uh, Geneva at uh, the International Labour Office was to talk to them about why um, those people were still, uh, it appeared, being barred from getting work as nurses uh, in Bahrain. And uh, Ibrahim was very, very keen to be part of this panel and to say more about, uh, more, more about those things. But I just wanted to acknowledge him and I wanted to acknowledge the work of the Bahrainian Nursing um, Association and to stand in the because that solidarity, I will make sure that I convey that back to him after the event as well. And, and if I can get a picture or, or two as well from those that are taken, I will send those uh, to him and, and tweet them from the ICN account because I know that uh, we did some of that before uh, and they found that very, very, uh, very, very useful. Um, so thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, what I'm going to do is to ask each of the speakers uh, are going to make some introductory uh, comments. Some are going to come to the podium, some are going to uh, stay seated. Um, and then once we've had uh, all of those contributions, um, I'm really keen to, it's a discussion, so to uh, open it up to, uh, to you as, as, as well. So I'll, I'll facilitate that when we get to it. Um, but firstly, uh, our speakers, uh, Grant, sir, over to you. Kia ora and greetings. Um, thank you for the introduction, Howard. My name is Grant Brooks, and I'm the co-president of the New Zealand Nurses Organisation. I'd like to thank uh, Howard and ICN for giving us the opportunity to participate in this panel today. And I'd also like to greet my fellow panelists, uh, Dorothy, Vivica, Andre, and uh, Barbara. Our organisation is both a professional association and a union, which represents 48,000 nurses, midwives, nursing students, kaimahi kawara and health workers on professional and employment related matters. Nancy and I was affiliated to the ICN, uh, obviously, and also to the South Pacific Nurses Forum, Global Nurses United and the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions. Our organisation embraces biculturalism, which is the partnership between the indigenous Māori peoples of Aotearoa and New Zealand and those who have arrived more recently of European and other ancestry uh, in, in the last two centuries. But in the words of the Whakatoki, or ancient Māori proverb, we're all in the canoe together. Our association believes that globalisation will be felt by nurses and NNAs in seven main areas. Workforce mobility, immigration, technology and telehealth, population displacement and climate change, workforce development and regulation, trade and investment agreements, and in the influence of ICN and member NNAs. Regarding workforce mobility, health workforce shortages globally are predicted to continue. Workforce mobility is also set to continue, and reliance in some countries on internationally qualified nurses, or IQNs, is likely to continue as well. If it's allowed to persist, the health workforce shortages will increase inequities in access to healthcare, causing preventable illness, disability, and death. And they will also threaten public health, economic growth, and development. And these key points were all highlighted by the High Level Commission on Health, Employment, and Economic Growth last year. For our association, uh, our publication on IQNs and immigration was published in February, and it notes that New Zealand has the highest dependence on migrant health professionals of any OECD country. We have very low retention of health professionals, and there's a high percentage of churn among our IQNs, both in leaving our country and leaving the sector they were employed 
uh, in recruited board. The next slide indicates our association's response. Long-term planning for a sustainable nursing workforce in today's globalised world should include a commitment to employment of new graduate nurses. In 2016, only 57% of the new graduates from New Zealand Education Institutes were employed through the Advanced Choice of Education Scheme. We also need meaningful IQN retention strategies. And these should include accessible and affordable competence assessment programs, security of working visas, for example, freedom from revolving renewals, and supportive work environments, including safe clinical environments, equitable remuneration, and freedom from xenophobia and racism. Technology is the fastest growing enabler of healthcare delivery. Technology transcends borders, and thus its global impact on nurses, on nursing practice, and on, and on our association is inevitable. The way in which consumers or patients use technology as an enabler for their own self-care will also impact on nursing and influence future models of care. Technology and telehealth will also change the notion of place and presence. Consequently, nursing care may not be provided in the traditional way, face to face. It may be provided across national boundaries, and this raises regulatory concerns. To influence the direction within New Zealand, we have also developed a position statement, Nursing, Technology and Telehealth, published last year. According to the High Level Commission on Health, Employment and Economic Growth, the number of political conflicts globally increased over the last decade by a factor of 100%. The number of people displaced due to conflict increased from 37 million to 60 million, mainly in middle-income countries. Between 2008 and 2014, natural disasters displaced 184 million people. Within conflict zones, healthcare workers and nurses might become political targets. Nurses in our associations will need to become more prepared, educated and trained to work with displaced populations and refugees, including provision of nursing care in conflict zones. Regarding climate change, our association published a position statement last year, and we have since divested our funds from fossil fuel companies. The communique of the 2016 South Pacific Nurses Forum, which we attended, also identified population displacement as a result of climate change, along with migration, education and regulation, as key areas for attention. The members of our organisation frequently respond to disasters in the Pacific caused by extreme weather events. To succeed in implementing the Agenda for Sustainable Development through SDGs and poverty reduction, equality education, decent work and inclusive economic growth and gender equality, we potentially will see a shift in workforce development away from narrow specialisation to broader and lifelong building of competencies. Nursing workforce development, education and training would like to have a strong emphasis on early intervention, community-based care, primary care, population health and public health promotion. This will be complemented by improvements in advanced nursing practice to improve access to health services. Likewise, our associations are likely to change their focus to support a broader approach to workforce development, but will continue to ensure that this results in decent jobs, working conditions, and pay for health workers. Globalisation does require NNAs to engage more in political commentary. Some governments are responding to globalisation by entering into trade and investment agreements such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, and these have potential negative impacts on economic inequality and other determinants of health, on health policy, funding and access to medicines. Nurses and our NNAs will need to promote intersectoral collaboration at local, regional, national and international levels in response. We have a general election coming up in New Zealand. And in our political commentary this year will be based on our election manifesto, which identifies seven priorities. Sustainable nursing workforce used to its full extent, investment in public health, a primary care approach to improving population health, best start for children, safe clinical environments, fair employment and social and health equity. I'll conclude by saying that globalisation will require multi-level engagement to address the seven areas highlighted in this talk. 
nurses and our associations will need to be adept at managing the impact of globalisation. As the High Level Commission on Health, Employment and Economic Growth stated last year, no single agency and no single sector can, can implement the changes required to achieve a fit for purpose health workforce in the context of persistently high unemployment and underemployment in many countries and amid major demographic, technological and socio-economic changes across all countries. Political will, leadership, intersectoral action and international partnerships will be critical to success. Thank you.